This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Well, this is something you need to know, because you're always going to at least go on one first date, I would imagine. A lot of you going on a bunch of them. So the survey asks, okay, what foods are the best to order on a first date? And I'm wondering, okay, I got you I got you fine people in the room. First date, what do you think is the best food to order on a first date? Easy. Foot long hot dog. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Wait. <laughs> For her. For I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't you setting unreasonable expectations at that point? I'll order a taco. She orders the brat, and we're good to go. No, I don't. I'm trying, first thing, wow. first, first date food. Surprising answer. Yeah. That's a good question. And definitely not pasta. Like spaghetti, because it gets a little too messy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I think, like, messy's probably not a good idea. And garlicky. Oh, All that's right. a good point. Yeah. Okay. So nothing, nothing pasta-y, messy, or garlicky. All right. So far, sushi. we haven't. Uh, sushi. Let's see if sushi's on the list. Um, ooh, I, I don't think so, because they're... They're saying you should avoid a lot of fish stuff, including sushi on this list. No mussels, no sushi, no crab, no lobster, no, no curry, yeah, no right? tuna steak. Wow. That, well, no, no prawns. Obviously, wow. if I'm doing sushi, you've got to make sure that the person that you're going on the day was like sushi. Otherwise, you're like, well, <laughs> do you like the children's teriyaki platter that they can give you or something like that? I mean, like, you know, here's you what I'm going to tell you. What's that? You really should never pick a weird food because people are always trying to be accommodating. And therefore, yep. they would say yes. Like your wife, didn't your wife say she liked a certain she thing liked, and it was. She liked mussels. And, yeah. And, and, and then I find out later on, after we went to the rock and I got it as an appetizer. And then like months later, she goes, I don't like mussels at all. I did it just because I didn't want to upset you. And, I was like, and you went, that's the first thing you did. That was, was that your first day you ordered mussels? Yes. Good job, buddy. Well, there was an appetizer. I was like, do you like mussels? She said, yes. I'm like, perfect. Let's get some mussels. See, that's why you never order weird stuff and ask What's them if so they like it. What's so weird about mussels? Well, I think it's weird for a first date because not everybody digs mussels. Is all. It's, it's not weird altogether. But for a first date, I agree. There's just certain foods you don't order because you don't know how people really feel. And they're not going to tell you the truth because they want to be accommodating. I feel like a lot of people would think like oysters are mussels because I, aren't oysters an aphrodisiac? But they're very awkward to eat. Oh, but they're fun to slurp. Exactly. No, oh, wow. Nothing better oh. on a first date than a big slurp sesh. Just, you know, you really are a fortunate man. I didn't do oysters. I did mussels. It was a little bit different. Little bit yeah, different. really. Yeah, you and your slurp fest. You don't yeah. slurp mussels. You have a little fork and you pick it out. And you'll... Oh. <laughs> thanks, thanks for the yeah. pantomime. Yeah. You know, thanks for showing me because well, I was concerned. I didn't know exactly how to do it, but you showed me. All right, I'm glad now you guys know. Enjoy your mussels. <laughs> Enjoy your mussels. I think like chicken wings would be tough, even though I love chicken wings. But you, your fingers are all messy, and that's like yeah. and you're sucking on your fingers, and that could get weird. Well, just go for the boneless ones, and you'll be fine. Then this yeah. is just getting chicken nuggets. Yeah, yeah, oysters. And by the way, Vicky, oysters are the number one food to avoid. They say, even Oyster. though you think they, yeah, they, you think they would be the aphrodisiac, or maybe it sends the wrong message. 
You know, I mean, it's like, oh, really? You trying to get me in the mood? His first damn date? You yeah, give me I, oysters? I would think oysters would be a fun first date. Like, you've never tried? Have you ever tried oysters before? Let's go try them. Yeah. Especially if you like them, it's kind of like, hey, bringing you into my world. Plus, it's like that you know how adventurous they are. Yeah, if they're willing to try something they've never tried before. Okay, you guys obviously should not be in charge of first dates. Well, thankfully, I don't have to worry about this anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you're, you, both of you are very fortunate. Did you, Danny, on your first dates, you do you do oysters? No, pizza. Pizza oh. seems like that's a good go-to. Yeah, like you would have you know, to do pizza. You know what I hate about this? It is the number one thing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, you know, I, I saw the, I saw it on the list, and I thought, damn, dude, stupid days ago, you know what you should do is pizza. Well, well pizza's I mean, a perfect choice. That's the go-to. I mean, it's, it's Danny's every choice for everything. If you, if you, do you need, do you, do you need a good food? Do you need something because you're incontinent? True. Do you need something for the baby? Everything is pizza. That's his answer for everything. You know what? Do you need a suppository pizza? You but it's a I mean? safe food to get. If yes, you don't yeah. like pizza, then they're probably not even like a human being. They're probably like an alien. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you should probably just end that day and anyway. You can either go buy the slice at some places or at least half and half a, a, a pizza. So even if they have different tastes than you, you yep. can still enjoy it together. Or like uh, pizza places have like calzones. So you, know, you can just do your own thing. All right. Well, you know what, Steve? Uh, pasta was on the list, but it was uh, more manageable pasta. Lasagna. They say is a good okay. first date. Yeah, spaghetti is the one I'm really thinking. Like that gets a little, yeah. that could get a little messy. And I don't want like like squirt it with sauce or something. And I hate to say this, but uh, <laughs> they're saying chicken wings is also pretty good for a first date. And you said you didn't think chicken wings. Are, and I, I'm with you, Steve. It's, they seem pretty messy. So it's weird that chicken wings made it, unless because everybody loves chicken, and maybe you know you're you're sort of getting more casual, more real, or more relaxed because you're eating with your fingers and. Maybe that breaks the you know breaks a little bit of the tension, but that's part of why I wouldn't because I, I I mean I channel my inner savage when I'm eating chicken wings like I'm ripping them apart I'm <laughs> sucking on them I'm licking my fingers like it's like a it's it's not a a, a, a sight to see especially if you're trying to impress somebody I mean it's yeah, me. yeah oh if it's yeah yeah. But if it's like, it's same with lobster. Like, I'm cracking it, or or crab. I'm cracking the shell. I'm shoving it in my face. Like, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. doesn't seem very impressive to someone that you've never met I know. Before. It lets you know exactly what kind of person you are, though. A pure mess, yes. <laughs> I, guess, I guess the difference is is that it's not the messiness factor of, of all the crab and lobster, but maybe just that not everybody's into crab and lobster, but who's not into chicken? That's the only thing I can think of, because I'm with you, Steve. They, it, they, it seems as messy, and you kind of don't want to look like a savage, and eating crab, lobster, and chicken wings kind of makes you look like a savage, so maybe it's just that chicken's uh, a more universally liked food? Mm -hmm. Well, and with crab and lobster, your fingers smell like it the rest of the night. Yeah. Like it, I, I've tried to do lobster and literally just smell like fish for the entire rest of the oh, night. Oh, that's like, not No matter smell. how much you do. Yeah, that's like, not great. So yeah. at that point, with chicken wings, I right. mean, your fingers might be stained, but they're not going to smell. And then it's just awkward throughout the day. You Keep smelling your fingers, and they're like, "What is going on here? What's up?" Or you go, "Hey, can you smell my fingers? Does it smell like fish." <laughs> wow. Okay, this is disturbing. first and last date. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, the good news for most dudes is that what's you know what's coming out on top of this list of foods that you should actually order on a first date are all good dude foods. Dude foods, burgers. Dude, yes, foods. sir. That's number two. Nice. That makes sense. Yeah. Burgers and fries. Can you really go wrong with that? No. no. Unless you're dating a vegan. Well, they, they, most places now have the Impossible Burgers mm -hmm. or the Beyond Meat Burgers, so that the option is there. Which is awesome. And then you look thoughtful. Oh, Here's what yeah. I would say to any vegans totally. out there. If you're going to go, if you're dating somebody and you don't know if they're a vegan or not, then you've got to either A, let everybody know what's up, or B, not be a pain in the ass. Because you're the one deciding a date outside of your people. You know what I mean? You're dating outside of your vegan people. Outside you think you're people. vegan people? Well, yeah, I mean, they seriously. They live on vegan island. Exactly. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. and look, I know people that will not date outside their vegan island. I mean, they just, they, it's like if you're not a vegan or you're not a vegetarian, like whatever their thing is, they're like, I'm not dating that person. You got to be on board. Well, that's no fun. The fun part is trying to convince them to try some meat. <laughs> Oh, that's the fun part for you. Hey, that's, try this. It's good. There you go. Yeah. Oh, are you vegan? Would you like some meat? See, it's the ultimate first date. I mean, I can see that right, right off the bat. He's just giving him oysters. He's giving him mussels. And the, and the vegan is just like, okay. <laughs> but it's not like 2000 anymore. Like, I mean, here we are in 2021. It's like every restaurant seems to have a vegan option. Or at least like they a do. garden yeah. burger or something they should have like something. that. Something that they can make. And that not, that's not just a salad. 
And that's why you like Daniels because uh, also on the list is steak. They say steak is a good first date thing, and Daniels has a a, ve- a, ve- a vegan option. A vegan? You sound like my parents. <laughs> <laughs> that's a vegan. Wait, what's a yeah? I was a vegetarian or vegan option. They got yep. it. Mm-hmm. They have a whole menu for it. Salad is also a good first date situation. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, you don't like okay, salad. Then. Wow. <laughs> Who's getting a salad for dinner? Uh, if I'm most, going to Red Robin, I'm getting the crispy chicken salad, and I'm adding all the bad stuff to it. Yeah, that doesn't feel like a salad. Yeah, no, it's, it's not. Like, it's like a pretend. That's like a taco salad. I mean, okay, exactly. is that really a salad? There's lettuce in it, right? <laughs> a well, it, there's, there's a, a crouton. There's a, that has to be healthy, right? <laughs> on a first date, a lot of people like to, you know, like, oh, I'll just have a salad, you know, uh, so I can see why it's, you know, it's a thing. Oh, so Wendy from Auburn brings up a good point about uh, shellfish. She says you should stay away from it, not only because of the smell, but because of the potential for something bad. It's sick from shellfish poisoning on the first date. Oh, good call. I had a friend that every time oh. he ate oysters, he would need the bathroom like 30 minutes later. And it wasn't food poisoning. I know she's talking food poisoning. He just but ran right through them. Something about, yeah, the, the oysters made him just want, like, have to go to the bathroom. And he was like, never, never again. Oh, I thought like he kept going and getting it. I'm like, why is he a glutton for punishment? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, he liked the taste of him, but yeah. Yeah. I like that ice cream is also on this list and a chocolate brownie. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm all for that. <laughs> What about I mean, popsicles? I <laughs> uh, can have otter pops for this Popsicles week. and bananas Steve wants on his first date. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We're going in this great, it's brats, bananas, and popsicles. It's a, it's a new, it's it's the latest trend. This one makes me sad because it's so tasty. Because I feel like like if you were I don't know, having a first date in October and you decided to go to like, you know, I don't know, a pumpkin patch or, you know, take a hayride, this is always available. And they're saying, don't do it. Corn on the cob. Oh, just because it's so messy and gets stuck in your teeth. Stuck in your teeth. Yeah. But it's so good, though. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it squirts. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, uh, really? wow. Like a juicy corn in the cob, sometimes you take a bite and it's like, oh, uh, wow. yeah. Depending yeah. on how they cook it, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about a giant turkey leg? <laughs> can, can that be- oh. yeah, if you're going to the fair, you have to get that. Get yeah, if you're at a rent fair. Again, if you're at the first dates at a Ren Fair, you should expect a giant turkey leg to be had, right? That would be so awesome. Uh, just I mean, first date, just giant turkey legs need cheers. That would be fantastic. I'm all for it. I say we do it. Well, you know what? What we've known is this, is that Danny, again, would be the ultimate first date because what he loves so much in the world is the number one thing you're supposed to get. And we know that Steve is a very fortunate man where his vegan wife put up with him and his muscles on the first day. Well, she wasn't vegan at the time. So it wasn't like she was breaking her veganism to eat a muscle. Any chance you probably sent her in that direction with the with the, with the muscles on the first day? 100% chance, yes. Yeah. She's like, you know what? I need to avoid these situations. I'm just going to cut off all of That's me. it. It's over. This guy I is mean, suggesting some weird ass. <laughs> he really is. We had some cops that were called because a couple had a fight over s'mores s'mores they had a fight over i'll tell you what happened at eight seventeen on the rock bj and migs mornings on the rock 99.9 kisw this podcast is brought to you by the washington state department of health when we think about the covid19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community let's remember it didn't happen by chance it's justified in history But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Wenatchee is gorgeous in the spring with its lush green rolling hills, abundant wildflowers everywhere, and the views of the Columbia River. The local food scene offers an abundant selection of authentic international cuisines featuring the unique farm fresh ingredients of the region. Wenatchee is also home to award-winning wines, handcrafted hard ciders, and a talented handful of local brewers producing fine craft beers. Visit Wenatchee, the heart of Washington State. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. A 54-year-old guy in South Carolina called the cops on Saturday because he said his 45-year-old girlfriend of two weeks had assaulted him during an argument. Uh-oh. Two weeks in and you're getting assaulted. Might be time to end this relationship. Oh, is that a warning sign? Yeah, I think that might be. Is that what the kids call it? Yeah. Now, here's the weird thing. is This argument apparently was over... How to make s'mores. 
That delicious treat. How can this end in an argument? I mean, it's you're talking. You're about to go to delicious promised land with uh, all these wonderful ingredients over a fire or a microwave, however you want to do it. So uh, what was the art? I mean, the, 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 please tell me the police report at least gave us the information behind like what they were arguing about, like who had what style of making a s'mores over the other. I mean, and this is bad else. reporting, Steve, because they don't have it. We don't know if they were arguing about how to make them or whether they should make them at all. We we don't know okay. why. We just know that s'mores were the center of the argument. But you're right. It's This is frustrating that we don't know what it was about. I feel like we could all agree that the argument wasn't about whether or not to make them at all. I think nobody's opposed to s'mores. I, I don't know. So. Is it possible that that's what it was? Is one of them said, they're disgusting, and, You're disgusting. And then all of a sudden, blows uh, uh, supposedly ensued. Now, the woman says she never hit the guy, and that's what she told the cops when they got there. He said, oh, yeah, oh, no, she hit me. And they're like, all right, well, we see no signs of that, sir. There are no bruises. There's no marks. Nothing to really back up your story. So they could not arrest her. They didn't have the evidence. Uh, and again, the story doesn't tell us if they broke up or if they're trying to work through it. What's part of the s'mores was the reason for the argument. I mean, this is really a very bad news story as far as their reporting goes. Is there multiple ways to make s'mores? Well, well yeah. Uh, yeah, in microwave. Yeah. You can heat them in the oven. You can put them over a fire. Oh, I was just going to say with, like, with different ingredients because the last time I went camping, uh, one of the people we went with brought all sorts of different things, including Heath bars, uh, peanut butter cups, and just different Whoa. types of chocolate. Okay, they're uh, stepping up their game now. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were legit about wow. this. I don't know how I feel about that because I just feel like the tradition is is the is the three ingredients is all you need and it's got to be Hershey's chocolate. Ah, screw your tradition, go nuts. Yeah, but if you want to put nuts yeah. on it too, why not? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I that's uh, yeah. Well, I think that you guys should try the s'mores dip version. It's where you put it in a skillet and you put chocolate and marshmallows. Just put it in the oven. You eat it. You scoop it up with the with graham, the graham crackers. crackers. That sounds amazing. It's perfect. Oh, s'mores dip. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, so is it problem. just like cho- melted chocolate in there, or do they actually have like a it's like a, a pudding or a fudge brownie or the ones I was seeing? They just did chocolate chips and they melted it down. Oh my! God. That's the way to go. I that mean, you've got to so do healthy. chocolate. Yeah. Oh, awesome. it's very healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Especially well, it, it saves time. <laughs> it, it, it does save time. You don't have to sit and roast it all. Whatever. You just get to do the dip. If so someone dip. showed up with that as their like, you know, everyone would usually brings like a dish or some alcohol, or whatever it may be, to a party. That person will forever be invited to a party. I don't even care if they like. Yeah, had an accident on my couch. Like they oh, wow. bring, they oh, wow. bring the, the they bring the s'mores dip. You're always getting invited back. Mm-hmm. By the way, you 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 very well could have an accident on your couch with this because, and it will look like you did because you could drop that everywhere. That chocolate smudges everywhere. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, it'll not look that like I'm somebody. encouraging someone to have an accident on my couch, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, yeah, how do you pass up on the person that shows up with the s'mores dip? Yeah, right. And I think you got to keep it heated, right? Won't the chocolate harden again? You know, so it's one of those things where if they bring it to your house, they almost have to make it at your house. I or you can get like a little, like a little candle type thing, like, you know, like or like a crock pot or something like that. Yeah, Ooh. oh, crock pot's yeah. not a bad call. I was thinking like those candles that keep like your food warm. Was it the chafing dish? Oh, a sterno, like a sterno oh. candle. Yeah, chi- yeah, or chafing okay. dish. I think is what. But yeah, I think I that's thought what that chafing is like the chub rub. I didn't know that's actually also uh, chub rub dish. Yeah, bring a chub, chub rub, rub dish. dish. Okay, yeah. fine. You <laughs> put that between your thighs. Yeah, well, if I want to dip into that. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, it's a special kind of dip. That's it. So it says s'mores are good with pe- with York peppermint patties. Ooh. Yeah, that was another one of the wow. uh, ingredients on that. I think I'd rather go like sure. an Andy's mint. I'm not sure how I feel about all of these, uh, you know, DIY versions. I kind of think like, you know, old school with the graham crackers, marshmallow, and the Hershey chocolate. You I can't feel like- knock it until you tried it. And I know you're a sweets guy, so I feel you got to do it for science. Well, here's what I will tell people. And again, when you mix all these things together... You know, the flavor palette gets thrown out the window, whereas I don't think you can taste certain stuff anymore. Like, I don't think you can taste the the the, the flavor of the graham cracker if you're throwing all these mints and all these nuts in there. Like, the graham cracker has its own sweetness, but it doesn't get outdone by the marshmallow, and then the chocolate has its own flavor. That's why it's so brilliant. The three work so well together. You put other stuff both? in there? Well, you, 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 you're upsetting like mint is just too powerful. I think you're going to miss another flavor because the mint wrecks everything out. But to go back to, like, Danny's love for pizza. I love a cheese pizza, but I'm also going to enjoy like a barbecue chicken pizza. Well, that's different. If you, yeah, yeah, but then at that, but but the point is, is you're 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 taking stuff off and throwing stuff on and creating a whole new flavor palette. Barbecue chicken pizza is delicious, but you're not competing against like mozzarella and tomato sauce because they do a little bit of a different thing, you know, with the barbecue. You know what I mean? They they take some stuff off, some stuff off, 
and put some new stuff on. But you're gonna you're gonna have the graham cracker, the mint, the marshmallow, the the Reese's peanut butter cup. I mean, the nuts. I mean, all of a sudden it's like, what are you tasting? I don't think you can taste half of it. Deliciousness. That's yeah, what that you're sounds tasting. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I know. You, I know you Get guys that think mouth. that way. But you I mean, know. you can still have your 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 plain old boring s'more, which is still delicious. Oh, but then also you can step uh, it up and maybe like you know sprinkle some uh, Reese's little, those little mini Reese's peanut butter cups on it or something. I, uh, I feel like you know my 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 top chef expertise is just wasted on you guys. I watched so much of that show you know i really know a lot about food now or somebody said even just use um uh, cookie butter instead of uh instead of oh wow just off cookie butter for the s'mores instead of a chocolate bar okay. wait, wait wait why wait, not wait. both wait a second so they put the graham cracker the bit see the biscuit you will never taste a graham cracker at that point don't even bother having the graham cracker why are you so focused bis- on the graham cracker it's like the weakest part of a s'more Oh, not it, at all. It basically it, just holds everything together. Yeah. The graham cracker's got a great flavor with all of that, though. It's a, it's a nice little hint of that graham flavor. But you ruin it. I mean, look, Biscoffs are fantastic. So but don't even use... And this is how the argument started. Yeah, you're <laughs> absolutely right. Yeah, I, I, this I, is how it is. I, 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 I mean, I, Vicky looks like she wants to punch you. I'm going to punch you. It's exactly what Vicky, happened. You in this know relationship. about flavor. You know about flavor palettes, though, Vicky. You know that certain foods you just can't uh, taste them if you watch well, the I mean, Food if, Network. If I'm eating s'mores, I saw Gordon Ramsay once. I have a flavor palette. If I'm eating s'mores, all I care about is it getting into my mouth. I don't care about anything else. Just the marchmallow and the chocolate and then the crunch of the graham cracker. It's I just, just uh, want it in my mouth. So I you don't guys care. are savages. This is why you can't have a nice meal. I'm not ever going to take you guys to a nice restaurant because you're not going to appreciate oh, you, it. the nice restaurant that serves s'mores. Oh, they, well, they serve s'mores at Canlis. <laughs> there are some restaurants that had like they have their fancy s'mores. I, I had I forget where the heck I was. It might have been out of state. It was a fancy restaurant, and they did their own take, like a deconstructed s'more, and it was delicious. So, I mean, the fancy ones, they, they understand what's up. I know they, they use the actual uh, Hershey's chocolate, or did they use some other kind of chocolate? I, you know, I, 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 chocolate. Didn't, I didn't grill the chef, but I'll tell you this. They were professionals. They knew what to mix and what not to mix. They weren't heathens with your peppermint patty is a, all I'm saying. A deconstructed s'mores for $50. I'm guessing. Like, oh, I'm yeah. Just As opposed to free at a campsite. Right, exactly. <laughs> like a dollar for each ingredient, so three bucks at the dollar store. So I'm instead, good. BJ, you don't know what you're talking about. You've never had it. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups are hands down the best s'mores ever. It's a game changer. All right. Well, I would argue that you cannot taste the graham cracker anymore if you if you go. Well, let me see the Reese's, the peanut butter. It's possible you still can. I won't. I won't discount a Reese's by itself as opposed in, in place of the Hershey's. That could work well because so you know I feel like you know the peanut butter is its own flavor. It may not overpower anything else. I'm, I'm willing to give that a try. Oh, this person says they replace the graham crackers with a waffle cone. Place it in the fire. Cook it to perfection. I'm in. Let's do this. I'm willing to Don't, try. I won't argue with that. But it, but it's not a graham cracker. Well, my point being is is that you can't use the graham cracker if you're going to use all the other stuff. Uh, and the waffle cone, though, you are in danger, but you usually waffle cones... In danger you know, of what? Well, not being able to taste them. You know, the idea is is that you're going to have the calories. I want to taste what I'm eating. Uh, otherwise, what am I putting those calories in my body for? But waffle cones have, you know, that ice cream delivery system. So there's a great chance a waffle cone will still be able to be tasted in the midst of all the other s'more stuff you put on there. Look, I, I can't help it if you don't understand my expertise, but no, haven't no, watched no. all those episodes of Top Chef. Uh, this texture, uh, this texture's helped me put it in a better mindset. Is that effing old people and their traditions? All right. That's true. That, yeah. Yep. There we go. Yeah, well, listen, um, I'm going to tell you this, you know, if, if you're going to be savages, you're going to be savages. What can I tell you? I, age does not know savagery and vice versa. There's a lot of old savages out there. Hell and, yeah, and, team and savage. Are, yeah, now we need to just have like a s'mores board of just Ooh, s'mores. A charcuterie oh. board of s'mores. Just different oh, kinds. Peanut you guys butter are, ones. Yeah, you're done. It's salt okay. and caramel one. Yes. It's okay. yeah. you this guys, would be the weekend to do oh. it. This is. Be, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We need yeah. to be outside. It's going to be hot. Yeah. yeah. Start a fire in your backyard and just yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, do it. That, well, you don't even need to. Just put them in your backyard. They'll make themselves. That's this, this right weekend. Now, yeah. yeah. Just put it on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come back in five minutes. Yeah. Man. Well, it's look, now the, 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 we can all agree that we love s'mores in whatever way, shape, or form. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Someone so, said, oh, you switch out the Hershey's with Godiva. It's a game changer. All right, I'm not going to argue with that. You're going chocolate for chocolate. Again, that works for me. Chocolate for chocolate. Yeah, I mean, look, you just have, you know, you got you, you to, you know, I like to taste my desserts. And if there's multiples, I got to know which one to eat in which order or you won't taste them because you'll be oversweetened by something else. One time I said my daughter suggested using Oreos instead of graham crackers and they were amazing. Oreos and then the rest. Yep. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's that's interesting. Well, if he said they were amazing. Says it's not good. 
I don't know. It's I, I, it's again, it's tough to tell. It really is. But you know what? If they if they say it's good, I mean, because the Oreos are chocolate flavor. Then you so you're putting chocolate on the chocolate, and then you're putting marshmallow on the chocolate cream. Like, what are you tasting at that point? I don't know if you if you can taste everything. <laughs> well, what about got, sushi? Like, you know, sometimes you got a bunch of crazy stuff on top of your sushi roll, but it's still delicious. I don't know if I'm necessarily like, oh, I, did I taste the, the little bit of uh, un- green onions in there? Or uh, taste- sushi, marshmallow, and chocolate's terrible, Steve. Okay, yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, Rev has got a really good brown point. rice. I think it's okay though. Yeah, oh, okay. and you can't taste a graham cracker when you have the eel on there. You just can't. <laughs> but I like, like a salmon nigiri, which is just fish and rice, just yeah. as much as I like, you know. A mountain roll of trappers or something like that, where it's got like a, a heap of stuff on top of it. I gotta be honest, Steve. I mean, the way you hoover that stuff in, I'm not sure you're even tasting yeah, anything. Did you, you have any flavors with that? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I taste awesomeness. <laughs> I mean, really, like, what does that taste like? I'm like awesomeness. I'm, uh, what does the plate taste like? Because I feel like that also is being eaten <laughs> because of the amount of sushi that you get over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a good little. I'm getting a little flavors of uh, porcelain, porcelain on the palate. Uh, well, listen, sushi's good. I mean, well, sushi's good. Uh, s'mores are good. There's no argument here. No one's going to get a fist to the face over this. Unless you're in a relationship of two weeks. I, yeah, yeah, that, right. that is the game changer. That, that, that's like, okay, maybe we should not be dating. You punched me over s'mores. Yeah. Or you lied about me punching you over s'mores and called the cops on me. Like, either way, I don't know who's guilty there. But if really she did not assault him and he went through all that drama to get the cops there to try to get her in trouble, I hope she's like, yeah, it's over, buddy. You're an idiot. I'm out. One way or the other, it's not a healthy start. Two weeks in and the cops are at your house over your uh, over s'mores battle. You both need to walk. You both need to go, eh, is, you know what? It's not going to work. There's yeah. just no way this is going to get better. Yeah, usually that doesn't end with, and that's when I realized I loved her. That's the thing about that is that, you know, if they could just sit in front of like a people's court jury of their peers, or I would say just a jury of normal people, because normal people, that doesn't ever happen, let alone two weeks into the relationship where the cops are called on you. For right, yourselves. I think about like my friends, like they'll share experiences. I never want to like say you should date that person, not date that person, or break up with that person, or whatever it may be. But I feel like that would be the situation where I'm comfortable enough to be like, look, she punched you or called the cops on you because of a fight over the s'mores. You're only two weeks in on this. I say you cut your losses and find someone new. And let me ask you this. Do you then go home, look in the mirror and go, wow, one of my friends just had the cops called on them for having a fight over s'mores and a punch battle. Why is that person my friend? Like, you know what I mean? I start evaluating no. my life going, wow. I don't know anybody that's had anything this ridiculous happen to them really? two weeks into a relationship. I'm sure you have. and You might not even know it because they don't tell you. Uh, it's a good thing they don't tell me because oh, they won't yeah. be my friend anymore. Yeah, but I've had lots of friends have really bad relationships. I'm just like, you, you clearly are terrible at picking relationships. But like that's, you hope that eventually after a couple of misses that they'll hit a home run in the next attempt. You mean two weeks in this this kind of a dumb thing? That's what I'm saying. I, you're right, Steve. Stuff happens, but usually it happens. Not on this level, no. But yeah, but I mean, definitely not like, this early and this stupid. I mean, it's like later on I could see maybe six months I'm in. I'm not going to question their friendship. Now, if they were the one that was doing the assault, then I'd be like, dude, what's wrong with you, man? Like, I don't know if I can hang with you. You're hitting people. Because of oh, there's that more, but but I, I, if they had a bad relationship with someone who's got a little wackier psycho on them, I'm not going to judge them for that. Yeah, I kind of I kind of sit there and go, I don't know. I mean, I'm all of a sudden look at that person different. Like, how do you get? And it's you know, it, it, there's only a couple people in my, my life where these things seem to happen to Steve. Like, it doesn't. These things don't happen to everybody. But it, the, you know, there's that one person that you know that things like this happen, and more things like this just continue to happen to them. Now, if they're not willing to put a peanut butter cup on a s'mores, then I have to really rethink my friendship. Yeah, right. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. They're bad at making decisions in life. (laughs) Well, and of course, yeah, and you guys, and and Vicky with her comments, and yeah, there's no way. I'm starting to rethink her even being on the show where she doesn't want to have a nice little s'mores dessert. She wants to go get three, you know, three dollar thing over here. Come on. I mean, I want to be with classy people in my life. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah, how are you doing a show with us? Yeah, I know. Exactly. Like, I know. Let me. Well, well, why do you think this is? Um, uh, you know, uh, who's love? Every day I'm looking in the mirror, Steve. Every day. All right. Well, there you go. Let it press, Danny. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. In the card game blackjack, what two values does the ace have? Uh, Eleven and one. Yes, eleven. <laughs> Peach. Eleven. <laughs> like I said, every day I'm looking in the mirror. Every day. <laughs> evaluating my situation. 
Hey, you want a shot at beating Steve? Well, you know you got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's a question from a listener. Uh, my house is currently in foreclosure. I've stopped making payments. What can I do to save my house? If you're already in foreclosure behind on your mortgage, you can stop the foreclosure by filing a bankruptcy. There's different types of bankruptcy. Chapter 13 can help you catch up on your house payments if you're behind. It would mean that you'd have to start making your house payments again and catch up on the amount that you're behind over five years. You could also take off or strip off your second mortgage, which would help you to reduce your housing payment every month, especially once you're done with the plan and done catching up on your first mortgage. We could also try to buy you some time in the more in the in by filing a Chapter 13 case. Filing a Chapter 13 would definitely stop your foreclosure. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. And thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.